Trans kids in Texas are scared they'll be taken from their parents. You play with the chickens. Don't act like a princess that you are. Come on. Okay, but what if I don't want to touch disgusting dead worms today? She doesn't. She likes me, though. Oh, hush. We first met Kai when she was just five years old, living in a conservative suburb of Houston. When Mom thought I was a boy and dressed me like a boy, I did not like it. So I, and I already thought she um, knew I was a girl, she, but she didn't know, so I had to tell her when I was old enough to say it. For nearly two years, Kai's mom, Kimberly Shapley, fought their local school board so that Kai could use the girls' bathroom. The suicide rate for a transgender youth is 41%. That is why we are fighting so adamantly for these children. Kimberly lost that battle. And in 2018, she moved her family to Austin, where she hoped Kai would be safe. But in late February 2022, following an opinion by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, Governor Greg Abbott ordered the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, or DFPS, to investigate parents who support their trans kids' gender-affirming care for, quote, child abuse. The concern is that these children could be separated from their parents. <laughs> Oh my. Pro-life, by the way, dude. Love what being pro-life. This is some real small government pro-life shit. I love being the party of small government and being pro-life and then doing this shit, okay? Yeah, let's use resources uh, on, on literally fucking criminally prosecuting straight up, like, uh, the, the parents of a, the, the most vulnerable population, dude. Fuck it. Oh my gosh, I missed you guys. And by the way, this is not done for some like real moral reason. The only reason why this is done is cruelty, okay? The cruelty is the purpose. The cruelty is the reason. I've reached 12 months. And people right disagree with me and they say, the no, they like legit legitimately think like trans thank people you. are being hurt and or whatever the fuck by uh, going pride. through, uh, by taking hormone blockers and shit like that. It's like, no, this is such a tiny small Just marginalized group of individuals that you are you adding on, on to show, the fucking uh, uh, cruelty and the uh, cruelty when of their existence the show, Olivia, hang on the show. and and using state resources to do this specifically so you can win a fucking uh, uh, election it's well, wild so good to again family values i love being the party of small government family values and also pro life and then completely violating all of those principles literally nonstop. Hey, cutie. Good to see you too. <laughs> Over the past few years, Kai has become one of the most outspoken young trans activists in the US. In 2021, her testimony in front of the Texas State Senate helped stop a bill that would have criminalized gender affirming care for minors. I've been having to explain myself since I was three. This new directive is an attempt to stop trans youth from accessing medical care anyway, even though major medical associations say that care, which can be anything from puberty blockers to hormone treatments, is medically necessary. Come on, All right. okay, show you upstairs. So this is your room? Yes, this is my room. This is Dolly Parton's posters. She gave them to me after I sent her a letter and a big box of stuff. Awesome. And she eventually sent something to me, so. So cool. And then over here are our beds. Yeah, like, this, this little baby's parents deserve to be in jail. Like, that's, that's great. Cool stuff, dude, Thank really, I mean. Takes. Stayed for the daily drip. Trans education is a horrific crime against humanity? Bro, what is wrong with you, dude? Have you been lobotomized? What the fuck does, is this Vladimir Putin's doing? No, it's Greg Abbott, the Texas governor, 
and you're still bringing up fucking Vladimir Putin in this conversation. What, you think I think Putin is pro-trans? You think I'm pro-Putin? Dude, please, please, dude. Your brain cancer is just like leaking out of your fucking ears, dude. Oh my lord, I'm just, I'm banning you. I can't deal with this, dude. 18 month subscriber. Even when I'm fucking talking about like American news, you still gotta be like, dude, fuck Putin. Yeah, of course, fuck Putin, dude. Dumbass liberals, dude. Can't, like, can't even allow criticism exclusively of American affairs by Americans without being like, well, Putin's fucking hates trans people too. Yeah, okay. So what? So you agree with Tucker Carlson with with respect to what you think Tucker Carlson thinks Greg Abbott and this move is fucking disgusting. Is Tucker Carlson pro trans? What, what are you talking about? Negative. Oh my gosh. How fun. This is uh, you guys like get to have a slumber party every night. Yeah, we have bed tents. They're really cool. So cool. Do you ever think about this sort of what ifs? Hassle, hassle, hassle. I obviously still feel worried and nervous, but I'm not exaggeratively worried because I know that we'll make it. In those moments when you do worry, like what are some of those thoughts that go through your mind? Well, what if they took away, what if they took me away from mom? What if... What if they arrested mom? What if they took me somewhere? What if they forced me to be somebody who I wasn't? Mm -hmm. I always have these thoughts moving through my head. Like, what if this happens? Should I do this? Should I jump out the window? Has that sort of escalated in the last few days? It's not been, it's been getting a bit worse, but whenever I needed some help or anything, I would let one of my friends know, like Sky, or let my mom know, and he would chat. Um, which is, my mom's been with me my whole life. I wouldn't have made it without her. Why have you been sleeping with me the last two nights? Well, I have two reasons. One, so that I wake up on time. Uh, the second one is because I'm a bit afraid of what's been going on. You need to remember that there are, what? There are more people with us than it comes to. And you need to remember that it's my job to... Worry, and it's my it's job to tell my story. Treasure. Okay. When the governor came out with the order a few days ago, what was your experience sort of seeing that? Initially, just <laughs> that was. I'm sorry, that was a good joke. This little girl's long game to win Olympic gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Transphobes will look at this and be like, "That's right, brother. She's trying to win Olympic gold. <laughs> That's why she's doing this." Except, of course, when you do uh, hormone blockers at an age like this, pre-puberty, puberty hormone blockers, you actually don't make the 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 physical gains that uh, Republicans regularly talk about with respect to, like, uh, you know, people who are assigned male at birth uh, uh, going through gender confirmation uh, therapy to... to uh, I, what, what is the fucking proper terminology? You should become women. Like, they're women, right? That's... that You don't get those bone density gains, brother, when, when you, you know, when you go through that. But even then... You assuming she's on HR? Wait, what? No, that girl is 11 years old. Very likely, they're just on hormone blockers. That's it. Transition. Salam, big buddy. Well, I, I, I thought that people didn't like that anymore. I don't fucking know. Explain the joke like a true leftist. Okay, shut up. Just texting with other moms just to literally and calling just to cry with each other. And then the text messages started coming. CPS called me today. And your heart drops. And you're, you know, you're just, this can't be happening. You know, you're totally numb and this can't be happening. And then, you know, the next text message comes and you're like, oh my God, this is literally happening. What do we do? Who do we ask? Who do we call? Do you talk to Kai about like what to do if a CPS investigator? 
Nah, fam. Only an adult can make that decision. Shit's gross, and it's just the truth. Fuck the laws being up in the place, but nothing is health about trans kids. Bro, you're literally fucking... It's a reversible process. You know that, right? Like, the, the puberty blockers are, are a completely reversible process. If that's the case. That's fucking insane to, to just say some dumb shit like that. Like, I mean, at least this person, black boy, been here for 60 months, is at least being honest about where he's coming from. A lot of people will make it seem like, you know, it's anything but. They feel anything but. This stuff, hormone blockers early on, puberty blockers early on, is unironically one of the best, most effective ways that, that uh, uh, trans people can comfortably transition. It's crazy. It's just like... Great for mental health. It quite literally directly saves lives. Like, it, it's wild. Wild that you would think that this is, uh, you know, anything but life-saving medical care. Peter showed up. What to say, what not to say. I did talk to her about if CPS were to show up at school, um, just get on her Instagram and go live and keep keep her phone on. And I told her the ways that I would be able to track her um, and that I would come get her. Make no mistake, I will come get you. Mm. I want you to think about Kai being taken from my home and given a boy's haircut and made to wear boy clothes and called by her dead name. 24 hours at such an early age to decide their gender first of all the child is deciding their gender that's one and two it doesn't matter because puberty blockers at the very least like allow someone to one make that decision for themselves when they're older and two more importantly you motherfuckers think you just buy this at cvs like oh hello Welcome, I'm an 11 year old. I'm at CVS right now. Please, pharmacist, give me a fucking hormone blocker. Like, do you understand the, 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 the numerous fucking loops that you need to go through? Also, deciding is like the entire point, uh, you know, kind of, <laughs> that people fundamentally misunderstand. You don't decide your gender, dude. You, you just, you are your gender. Bro, people literally just, I, I think people unironically think like, oh yeah, let me just, <laughs> people think we live in the anarchist commune that people were talking about earlier, <laughs> where, where it's over. The supply chains have been disrupted in its entirety, so people are making bathtub HRT and gender blockers, I mean, or hormone blockers. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, hey, Bo, Bo, Bo James. Can you make me some bathtub HRT when you're done with the bathtub insulin? <laughs> yeah, I need it. It's a day where no one will affirm her because they want to fix her. Yeah. I will find her. Within 48 hours of Abbott's directive, five Texas district attorneys- Former blogger, dude, they should get fuck you up entirely. No way this is fully reversible. Yeah, you know what else is not reversible? When you fucking commit suicide. Sorry, trigger warning, but like, you know, that's also not reversible. So, shut the fuck up, idiot. Let the medical professionals handle it and not a dumbass like Greg Abbott and the- Republican uh, state legislature of Texas declared their offices wouldn't pursue cases against parents of trans kids. And even some of those tasked with enforcing the directive disagree with it. One DFPS investigator agreed to speak with us anonymously. Do parents have to answer the phone, answer the door, or talk to an agent like you? No, they can say no. They don't have to resign releases. They don't have to let us in their home. I don't think the average person knows that. You are risking your job by talking to us. Why is it that important to do this interview? I, I know that these children are in great homes. I know they're not being physically abused. 
the first time I've ever talked to a reporter that the reporter um, was was crying. Excuse me, my apologies. It's my apologies. Made the comment that the family was impeccable. How many DL transphobes want to lose before you have some empathy? There is no amount. Transphobic people would just want trans people to die. That would that's the whole point. Transphobic people are never going to turn around and be like, oh man, oops, I guess we fucked up on this one. When people when transphobes fucking say shit like, oh well, we're actually defending the safety and security of people's genders or whatever the fuck, uh no, like they don't give a shit, dude. That's crazy. No, they're just they straight up, they straight up just don't want trans people to exist. <laughs> And then there was the only reason um, uh, was that the um, the person is a mandated reporter. This isn't a bigot. It's not a hateful person. It's not someone who's anti-trans. It's someone who just felt like they had to do this or they would lose their job. This is very dramatic and forgive me, but the only thing I could think of was Nazi Germany, that you had to turn in your neighbors. It's insanity to me with all the problems going on. This is what we're dealing with. I have to call all of these wonderful people out to to protect kids. To yeah, motherfuckers, uh, hormone blockers usually aren't even needed for adults in male to female transition. Blockers are extra strain on the body and not needed estrogen monotherapy for the win. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to say is like, bro, I'm on fucking hormone blockers. You know, there's a lot of people that you probably know that use hormone blockers. I don't know if you know this or not. What the fuck do you think? Uh, uh, FDA approved balding medication is uh, that's it and if I were to stop taking uh if I were to stop taking DHD blockers my hair would fucking fall out straight up I'd go bald many other people that also take it would also go bald often answer I did was lower my libido a bit when I stopped taking it it slowly came back no it is I've been fine it's prostate medication by the way so many men also take it, um, just like myself, not for their hairline, but later on in their lives, so they don't have fucking, they don't get cancer. DHT blockers, postmenopausal HRT, some blood pressure medication. Yeah, hella people do this, okay? But they're cis, so you don't think about it. You know what I mean? You just don't think about it. You, you never think about it. You would never think about it with what I do. To protect, and that's what we do for a living. That's literally in the interviews, ma'am. That's what we tell them. Said to get them to kind of a trust factor. Can't delay the inevitable, dude. You're gonna go bald. It's I quite literally have, due to medical technology. So it's funny that you say that, but I literally have been able to do that. I identified that my hairline was receding, and I straight up did do that. So, you know, my whole job is to protect you. That's what. That's all I do. And in these cases, I can't tell them that. What do you fear about this order? My fear is that these children will take, be taken back to where we were 30 years ago. Because those people that do believe in this, who have power, are, are using that power for political reasons, not safety. And I can't imagine that we would tell them, these parents not to protect their children. The order against trans kids in Texas is among this year's most drastic anti-trans policies so far. But it's not the only one. 32 states have introduced over 128 anti-trans bills, and 37 of those bills focus on outlawing gender-affirming care for minors. Save our families! Save our families! Save our families! The idea that our political leaders throw our kids under the bus to score political points is nauseating. So we are here, we're gonna stay, and that's it. So protect trans youth. We're here, we're queer, get used to it. We're here, we're queer, get used to it. 
So what have the last few days been like since the governor issued this order? It's really just been an absolute all-out attack on this community, and unfortunately, it's nothing new. This last legislative session, we had the most um, anti-trans bills introduced ever um, in the state, and so it's just been kind of a constant barrage of attacking this beautiful, wonderful, resilient community. What was your reaction when you saw the order come through? I mean, I was heartbroken. All everyone wants to do is keep the kids alive, and that's hard enough. I was a trans kid. This would have affected me. This affects a lot of trans kids that I know. It's so divorced from reality, divorced from science. Opposition to Abbott's order is mounting. After a lawsuit, a judge has already temporarily blocked a DFPS investigation into one family. The AG appealed immediately. <laughs> Donald Trump would not have let this happen. <laughs> okay, listen, I know this is a very, very serious story, but it's, it's fine to just like every now and then <laughs> have a moment where we can, you know, joke and, and uh, share some laughter, okay? <laughs> no, that dude is making a joke. It's like when fucking Trump supporters say dumb shit like that My about everything. Rotten, it's a joke. A Flashback. So, what are all these hostile actions and civil rights rollbacks that the Trump administration has taken? Fortunately for anyone trying to put together a timeline, GLAD keeps track of all of this with over a hundred examples, all sourced with links to media articles that confirm these examples. Going through every example would take the whole video, so here is a six minute summary of the worst of the worst. This will only take into consideration Trump himself, his advisors his under justice. his authority, and the cabinet under his death. authority, meaning the vice president and the executive departments. The rest of the Republican Party is another topic altogether. On January 20th, 2017, mere minutes after being sworn into office, the Trump administration removed any reference justice. to the LGBT you community from White House, Department of Labor, and Department of State websites. On the same day, Mike Pence became vice president. Pence spent his life both in politics and on the radio as one of America's leading anti-gay figures. On February 7th, Betsy DeVos assumed her office as head of the Department of Education. DeVos has ties to anti-gay organizations. On February 22nd, Trump and Attorney General Jeff Sessions removed Title IX protection for transgender students. On March 30th, the Trump administration removed the LGBT community from both the National Survey of Older Americans Act and Annual Program Performance Report for Centers for Independent Living. These are surveys that are used to provide for senior citizens, including disability, transportation, and caregiver needs. On March 28th, the Trump administration announced it would not include LGBT people in the upcoming census, despite a request from the Census Bureau the previous year. On April 14th, the Trump administration filed to dismiss a lawsuit in North Carolina alleging anti-gay discrimination. On June 1st, Trump refused to declare June as Pride Month, but did declare it Great Outdoors Month, National Homeownership Month, and National Ocean Month. On June 7th, Trump nominated Stephen S. Schwartz to U.S. Court of Federal Claims. Schwartz worked with North Carolina legislators in support of the anti-trans legislation known as HB2. On June 15th, Trump rolled back the Office for Civil Rights and their work investigating civil rights complaints and protecting LGBT students. Internal memos revealed the new procedure was to completely dismiss discrimination claims about transgender students needing access to bathrooms. The Department of Education later confirmed this. On the same day, the Department of Education hosted anti-gay groups like Focus on the Family and Family Research Council to a conference on child welfare. Again, on the very same day, the Department of Commerce removed... I'm telling you this once again, but if there wasn't literally so many fucking transphobes, both in liberal spaces and obviously in Republican spaces, more people have, would have paid attention to Donald Trump's um, significant actions against the LGBT population. Like, they, they got away with so much. They got away with so many fucking rollbacks exclusively because they, they did it as like, they pretty much did this as like a fuck trans people uh, wave. And most people were just like, oh, yeah, I'm mad, but also, like, who cares, right? Kind of, like, we're not really gonna... We're not really gonna do anything. And for those of you who are either conservative, or for those of you who are at the precipice of the margins of conservatism, and you're shocked that I'm saying 
uh, this about liberals. Just because someone tells you to, you know, call people by their proper pronouns on the timeline does not mean that they are a true advocate for fucking, you know, trans rights. You don't love the reality is injustice. that allyship for a lot of liberals devil. is, and if you Imagine are in the margins of conservatism, months. you might have correctly identified this on accident. That allyship is conditional. That allyship in a lot of circumstances is just to be able to weaponize as a talking point against you. Okay? So don't be fucking dumb. Don't be silly. And also protect trans people. It's fucking bullshit not to. They are people just like you and me. Okay. Sexual orientation and gender identity from the agency's equal employment policy. On June 17th, much of the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV AIDS resigned, saying that Trump does not care about AIDS. Later that year, he fired the rest of the council. Trump nominated Mark Norris to the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Tennessee. Norris supported legislation that allowed counselors to discriminate against LGBT patients. On July 26th, Trump declared a ban on all transgender service members from the military. The ban took effect on April 12th the next year, after a long battle in the courts. On August 3rd, Jerome Adams became the Surgeon General of the United States. Adams previously defended Mike Pence during his refusal to help AIDS patients during a crisis in Indiana. On September 7th, Trump nominated... He's also famously a legitimate anti-masker and was for the longest time until they owned him over and over again. ...nominated Jeff Mateer for the U.S. District Court of the Eastern District of Texas. Justice. Mateer is an anti-LGBT activist who once called transgender people Satan's plan. For brevity, no more judicial nominations will be mentioned, but suffice it to say, there are a lot more and a lot worse. These judges will have a deleterious effect on LGBT rights long after the Trump administration. On September 7th, the Department of Justice supported so-called religious exemptions that are often used to discriminate against LGBT people. On October 5th, the Trump administration reversed the Title VII policy that provided non-discrimination protections for transgender people. On October 13th, Trump spoke at an event for anti-LGBT group the Family Research Council. On October 17th, Trump spoke at an event for another anti-LGBT group, the Heritage Foundation. On December 5th, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders told reporters that Trump's position is that business owners should be able to put up signs saying they won't serve gays. On January 18th, 2018, the Department of Health and Human Services created a division specifically designed to endorse and protect healthcare workers who refuse to help LGBT patients. On May 11th, the Trump... The Religious Liberty Task Force, a.k.a. the Sharia Police, brother. ...administration rolled back protections for incarcerated transgender people. On October 21st, the Department of Health and Human Services proposed a change to the legal definition of sex which would remove non-discrimination protections for transgender, non-binary, and intersex Americans. On January 23, 2019, the Trump administration approved a waiver request by South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster, allowing adoption agencies to discriminate against LGBT couples. On February 8th, the administration confirmed it will be granting federal funds to adoption agencies that use religious exemptions to discriminate against LGBT couples. On April 4th, the Department of Housing and Urban Development refused to reinstate non-discrimination guidelines that would protect LGBT Americans. On April 17th, the Department of Health and Human Services announced that it would no longer collect data on LGBT foster children. On May 13th, Trump opposed the Equality Act. On May 24th, Trump announced a new policy stating transgender Americans would not be guaranteed health care protections under the Affordable Care Act. On August 14th, Trump urged the Equal Employment Opportunities Commission to allow discrimination against LGBT Americans. On September 20th, the Department of Education removed the terms sexual orientation and gender identity in their data that tracks student bullying. On December 17th, the Trump administration appointed anti-gay activist Tim Wildman. Remember guys, 1984 is when like a non-binary college freshman yells at you for not using they, them pronouns. And not when the fucking American government is literally legally writing out trans people out of existence. It's actually about the college freshman that personally upset me for a brief moment that has zero political power. This is what so many anti-SJW morons said 
for the longest fucking time and still do to this day. To the White House Faith Advisory Council. On April 24th, 2020, during the pandemic, no less, the Trump administration moved to end a hospital non-discrimination policy. Under this new rule, hospitals and healthcare workers can more easily discriminate against patients based on gender or sexual orientation. On May 28th, the Trump administration threatened to withhold funding for states that allow transgender athletes to compete. On June 14th, the Department of Housing and Urban Development announced it was considering removing a rule that required homeless shelters to allow access to transgender people. On June 22nd, Trump opposed new protections granted to LGBT Americans by the Supreme Court. Trump's press secretary later reinforced Trump's opposition. For about a hundred more examples, please check the aforementioned GLAD article in the description. Can I get some Lynch? And the case seems to be heading towards a drawn out legal battle. In the meantime, clinics like the Texas Children's Hospital have already stopped providing hormone treatments. And families like Kai's are left in limbo. Isn't birth control also meddling with your hormones? Yes, don't give them ideas, dude. What are you doing? Bro, what are you doing? I'm just kidding. I mean, if it were up to the Republicans, they would stop that too, so. It's been trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma. And the only goal I have is to protect my kids. I have no agenda. The mood in Texas is so dangerous. I mean, you know my evangelical background. I mean, I am a Christian, but what's happening in Texas is so much bigger than just what's happening to trans kids. And I think we better recognize it really, really soon. So will I move? Yes. Will I leave everything behind if I have to? Yeah, I mean, oh, wait, I don't want to show this if there's TOS stuff on here, but yeah. The pink triangle from Nazi labeled as the symbol of gay pride. Pink triangles were originally used in concentration camps to identify gay prisoners. That's where that comes from. Will I fight like hell? Yes. Trans kids are taking it upon themselves to educate the public. Earlier this year, Kai and her friend Sky, a 13-year-old girl from Arizona, started a YouTube show, Kai and Sky Talk Politics. Every week, they interview other trans kids around the country and inform their audience about issues facing their communities. They let us take a peek at one of their rehearsals. Open up on the computer so I can screen share. Hi guys, welcome to Kai and Sky Talk Politics, a trans kid production. My name is Skylar Morrison. I'm 13 years old and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, I'm Kai Shapley. My pronouns are her, she, like the candy bar. So much is going on in anti-trans legislation this week. Alright, I'm against this now. My fucking territory, okay? You better, you better recognize. Listen. Listen. You better better cut the shit out, okay? Get back to doing 11-year-old shit. None of this political streaming stuff, okay? You understand me? Back off right now. <laughs> oh, Boomer, it's their time now. No, I'm just kidding, man. Week, the first week of March 2022, and everything is moving so quickly. SB 1138 in Arizona. This bill would make it illegal to have any gender affirming care under the age of 18. There was some good news this week out of Utah where HB 0127, a trans healthcare ban, has died. Another one of the good things that's going on is the ACLU of Texas is suing the state of Texas from investigating parents who support their trans kids. Cases are being opened and investigated right now, and parents are being urged to refuse to talk to DFPS. If they call, do not let them in your home and immediately reach out for legal resources. Resource list. There's no way he didn't see the Beto sticker. Dude, what do you want me to do? Dunk on an 11 year old trans girl? Like, what the fuck? Oh, imagine being a fucking Beto supporter, dumbass. 
why are you not a communist? <laughs> like... <laughs> Yo, chatters are fucking on a different level today, dude. She's in Texas. What do you mean? Like, thank you so much for covering this. It's important. To offered by ACLU of Texas, Equality Texas, and Lambda Legal. Whatever your gift or talent, please use that to help trans kids. If you're a trans kid, we would love to invite you to be a guest on our show and share your experience being a trans kid in politics. Send either of us to DM on Twitter and Instagram. Someone said, someone said, rate their setup. It's kind of mid. <laughs> yeah, she's in Texas, bro. Who's she going to support? Greg Abbott? <laughs> what the fuck? 